Well, there's a lot more going on. Shrinking sea ice cover. This has been an area that, uh, of research that I've been very active in. Uh, you've probably seen in the newspapers or on the radio talking about the shrinking Arctic sea ice cover, right? That's us. That's the data we handle at our center. Uh, it all comes from there. But uh, we're seeing a big reduction in, in ice. Now, this is floating ice. This is the sea ice, which means it's ice that is floating on the ocean formed by the freezing of seawater. A very different thing than glacier ice, eh? or on an ice sheet like the Greenland ice sheet. This is floating ice. It's a very sensitive indicator of climate change. And what I'm showing here is uh, what, what, what you have in the sea ice cover is that it will grow through the autumn and the winter, right? Because it's winter in the Arctic. And then it will shrink, it will melt through spring and summer. You get a maximum typically mid March. The minimum is usually sometime around mid September. And this is just showing the sea ice at the minimum for both these years. It turns out that looking at the sea ice cover at the September minimum is really the best time of year to look at the overall health of the ice. It's really saying, well, all of the growth has occurred through autumn and winter, and all of the melt has occurred through spring and summer. What do you got left? Right? That's end of summer, September, kind of the best time to look at the health. And uh, here's where we were back in the uh, 1980s. This is sort of a typical year. September 13, 2012, still holds the record. We've lost something like 40% of the ice. Oh, it's variable. We recovered a bit after 2012. Now we're going back down again. It's a variable thing, as climate always is. It's always been and always will be a variable thing. But it's one of the uh, most pronounced indicators of what's going on in the Arctic is this shrinking Arctic sea ice cover. It's related to coastal erosion. If you are living um, in the Arctic along the coast, uh, you are on the front lines of climate change. You are not looking at it as something that's uh, mysterious or theoretical. You are dealing with it, okay? because your uh, village is eroding into the sea. Okay? What's happening here is that we've lost a lot of this summer ice cover. And it used to be that a big summer storm would come through, but the wave action would be limited because the ice basically decouples the atmosphere from the ocean, so you limit the waves. Well, now you go to like Point Barrow, Alaska um, at the end of August, there's no sea ice for hundreds of miles. So now that storm comes through, big waves. So not only that, the waters are warmer. Why does that matter? Right? Because a lot of these coastal bluffs, like you see in a lot of the Arctic, okay, is, is sediments that are glued, that's glued together by permafrost, perennially frozen ground. So now the waters are warming, so it's not just a, a mechanical erosion, it's a thermal erosion, it's thawing the permafrost. Not only that, the permafrost itself is starting to warm and thaw. So you've got basically a triple whammy going on here. The village of Shishmarev, Alaska, kind of the poster child of, of coastal erosion, is being moved because it's eroding into the sea. So this is a very real thing. In some of these areas, like this is on the Beaufort Sea coast uh, of uh, Alaska, uh, the coast is uh, eroding back like, you know, 25 feet a year, something like that, right? It's a very big, very big thing. I mentioned permafrost. Permafrost throughout the Arctic is warming. In some areas, it's thawing. Well, and uh, when permafrost thaws, you can get dramatic changes of the landscape such as you have here. Permafrost doesn't have to have a lot of ice in it. As a matter of fact, the definition of permafrost is just that ground temperatures are below freezing for two years in a row. You don't even have to have ground ice to have permafrost, technically. But a lot of permafrost does have ice. And when that permafrost thaws, those ice lenses and layers, things like that, uh, melt out. And that's what can happen. Uh, massive uh, changes uh, to the landscape. Um, you're seeing things like this around Fairbanks, Alaska, which is technically subarctic, but uh, buckling roads because the uh, permafrost are thawing. Uh, but you're now seeing at risk a lot of infrastructure. You might have seen pictures somewhere of uh, you know buildings that are kind of falling apart because the permafrost thawed underneath them. Uh, bridges collapsing. Um, think about uh, uh, road networks, right, in the north, runways. Okay, which are mostly gravel up there uh, in the north as the permafrost thaws. So you've got some big issues going on there. And uh, melting Greenland ice sheet, that's another biggie. Now, if you lose that sea ice cover, right, you melt that sea ice cover, that actually doesn't do anything to sea level rise because that ice is already floating. It was formed by the freezing of seawater. It's the idea of like a, if you take a glass of water, put an ice cube in it, make sure it's floating, measure the level of that water, 
come back an hour later, when the ice globe is melted, the level's the same, right? Archimedes principle. So what happened is just that as the ice melted uh, into liquid water, it just filled the very area that it had formerly displaced, uh, the area that it, uh, the volume that it had formerly displaced. Doesn't have anything to do with sea level, but this does, okay? Melting of the Greenland ice sheet and other Arctic ice caps and glaciers, right? Greenland ice sheet is melting down. It's also discharging more icebergs into the ocean. So it's a combination of melting, more iceberg discharge, and it's one of the planet's biggest uh, contributors to observe sea level rise. Other Arctic glaciers and ice caps are doing the same thing. My two little ice caps, oh yeah, they contributed. They contributed in a tiny, tiny, tiny way. I mean, these were just tiny, tiny little things, my ice caps, right? But they were uh, very uh, personal to me. But the Greenland ice sheet is definitely losing mass contributing to sea level rise. And uh, uh, now we've heard, of course, uh, uh, this morning, like what was happening to the Antarctic ice sheet, right? Going faster than uh, we thought it was previously. 